So that seems like a good segue to talk about your company, Theniska. So you you started the company in 2019? Yeah, we've been trading about just over 12 months. Just over, wow. Okay. So could you introduce the company? Um, You know, kind of what what is the goal? What kind of solutions are you developing? Uh, Absolutely. So um, so we are Seniska. We are targeting the causes of aging to treat the symptoms. So I think what we do typically historically in medicine is we treat the symptoms of age related diseases. Every common chronic disease that people are subject to pretty much is age related. Age is the biggest risk and quite often the biggest driver. So we're getting in at the beginning and we're targeting the basic mechanisms of aging to address those symptoms. Um, so as, as we've uh, we've discussed, I think dysregulated RNA splicing is another and druggable hallmark of aging. And we are developing um, a series of both small molecules, but also targeted oligonucleotides to address um, splicing factor dysregulation, restore all of those things that splicing factors do with a view to cellular rejuvenation, at least partial cellular rejuvenation in the context of age-related diseases. So that's that's what we're doing. Good luck with that. Thank um, you. Pardon. What I'd like to ask is kind of more about your aging in general. Yeah. So why, why do you think we age? What's your kind of um, theory of aging? I mean, is it programmed? So there are as many theories of aging as there are scientists, as you know. Um, so my particular take on this, and I also think it's quite difficult to, to separate them. Perhaps I don't think there's necessarily one, one way of one theory of aging, but I think if I, if I had to put my, my throw my hat in the ring, I'd probably go with the antagonistic pyotropy one. Um, so there are several different ones. There's, you know, the disposable soma one, which is a trade-off between growth, reproduction and repair Your cells only got so much resource. And I absolutely think that's probably part of it. There's also, um, theories of programmed aging that we're just programmed genetically to age, um, which I think that there's, that's for me harder to reconcile um, because these things evolve and things, things which are, pro, that I can see that programmed aging might have an, a, a beneficial effect on the population level, but on the individual level, yeah, I mean, I, th- I think there are people talking about it, but yeah, the, the antagonistic pyotropy theory I think has a lot of a lot of sense to me, um, by which you know things evolve because they're useful for you while you are still in the reproductive phase of your life. So you, as an organism, your purpose is to reproduce and pass on your genes. So your your body is has evolved to um, it has evolved to, to do things which will help you to do that. So obviously senescence in young life is useful. So the body has evolved things to basically make that happen. So it's it's important in things like wound healing and embryogenesis. So it's a good thing. And and also avoidance of cancer in in young life. So we've evolved mechanisms such as cellular senescence to be able to, 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 to help us survive longer. The problem is that as we age, the ability to clear those senescent cells becomes compromised. And unfortunately for those of us who are now over 50, um, once you've had your family, your evolution and nature do not care what happens to you. So we select the things that happen in young life, which are protective in young life. And actually, as far as evolution is concerned, it doesn't matter. So, um, you know, we're living longer now than we probably were intended to biologically um, when we first evolved because of we've now got healthcare and we now understand a lot more about what's going on and, and better living conditions and things. So I think that it's just that we're primed to evolve things that are good for us when we're young, which have perhaps un, unplanned deleterious effects as we age. Yes. I do. So I, I kind of tend towards programmed, but I, I'm with you is I, I cannot understand the evolutionary mechanism that would get us there. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I mean, as I said, I don't think you can put all of your eggs in one basket. I think there's a certain um, that there are certain advantages to all of these different kind of theories of aging. There's, you, you know, that 
that there's evidence out there for obviously for, for the, the disposable soma aspect of it that there's a finite resource set and obviously your body's gonna put what it needs into there and i think there are elements of programmed cell aging in both of those you know both of those other mechanisms anyway so i think it's actually quite hard to distangle it but i think on the population level something which has evolved to take the the kind of the weak and infirm out of your population if you're still a hunter gatherer you know it's going to be helpful for you to have the majority of your tribe being fit and healthy and able to hunt but on the individual level it's I, I find a little bit harder to reconcile but i i think there are aspects of that in in all of the other all of the other ways as well so i think i don't think anybody really knows yet and i don't know that we ever will you um do you see like a change in attitude towards in aging in particular like funding and and also interest in people who want to come work in your lab do, do you see it as more of a an, an interesting area yeah yeah absolutely so so i i kind of got into the the kind of aging field again almost by accident because i was interested in this process and this is what it does but yes i've seen a big change over the last 10 years that it used to be seen as a bit fringe and a bit crackpot um these days i think people are realizing that you know this is this is a really fundamental thing that happens to every single one of us and every single living thing pretty much not everything but but most things on this planet age and the economic burden of that, actually, um, in terms of, you know, the need for social care, the, the need to treat the diseases of ageing. I think that's I think money is a big motivator for governments and, and where they're spending. So I think that's helping. But we're all you know, each of us has an interest in our own survival, don't we? So um, I think there's a lot more acceptance now that that actually what we're doing is not just something which is a uh, you know done by a small select group of people in basement labs under conditions of darkness it's something that actually has a real fundamental contribution to future you know future health of our population in terms of funding i think um on the academic side yes you know there, there is there, there is funding for for the research into aging but it is lumped in there with research into everything else. So there are foundations and charities for dealing with dementia, cancer, kidney disease, heart disease, looking at the diseases, but actually fundamental aging mechanisms fall into, you know, if you're looking at um, UKRI, for example, they fall into the, the BBSRC remit, but also into the MRC remit, but you're competing against everything else. There is no ring fence pot of money in academia for aging research. So it means that it's a lot more difficult to get academic research in aging in that format. There are starting to be some endeavors like the impetus grants that came out last year, which are specifically for this. And as, as a researcher, I was just so happy to see that there are you know, pots of money that we can bid for now where, where we've got more chance of actually getting, getting our stuff read and, and funded because you're not out there competing with, with everything else. On the industry side, it's been really nice to see big injections of cash coming into this. I think people are starting to see the potential benefits of it, that it isn't just, you know, as I say, it isn't just something which is interesting. It's something that could have, it's something that could have real impact. I'm biased, of course. But <laughs> yes, and I agree with you.